Welcome everyone today. Um, I have been working on this topic for a long time, maybe a year or more. Um, it, not in a dedicated way in any way, just waiting for ideas to come to me. Um, and um, a month or so ago, I had a dream um, which um, brought me to this idea again. Um, and I and I began to write some more about it. I, I'm so glad I have a computer because it just, it's um, a way just to write stuff and, and explore ideas. Um, although I have a file folder, uh, it's getting fatter and fatter. <laughs> it says, uh, great ideas. <laughs> um, but this, um, I, I, I missed, um, Paulette's book, How to Save the World for Free, that sounds really good. I didn't do a lot of reading. Um, this is a very simple, easy book. It's called um, The Butterfly Effect, How Your Life Matters, Andy Andrews. And I, I think I'll put it in the library. It, I got it from Better World Books for eight bucks. So, I love what everyone has said so far. It's a lot of, you've already said what a lot of my talk is about, but you didn't have my dream. It went like this. <laughs> I was traveling with a friend, I don't know who it was. Um, we had a problem with the car and walked to an old farm and people were in a large barn taking care of animals. Um, we walked into the barn trying to communicate our problem and navigate a very slippery floor because, you know, animals pee and the floor gets slippery. Um, I grew up on a farm, so I know what a slippery barn floor is like. So I fell down. I was sliding toward this, this dark pit. It, it was just dark. I would kept sliding. <laughs> and at the very edge, I stopped. And I, and I, and I said to myself, well, why didn't I fall into this pit, this bottomless pit? <laughs> and the, the voice that came through me said, because you have a part in saving the world. So <laughs> truly, um, I've, I've com been coming to realize that we um, all have a part in saving the world. No, just, you, just, you. just no, <laughs> no, all of us, every one of us, and whether or not we believe it, we are doing it. We are doing it with our heartfelt way. We live in this world. We're living with the choices we make, we're living with choices we made a long time ago. And as these, uh, as we become more aware, we be, I, I'm aware that we become more um, conscious, we become more loving, we become more careful of what we do and what we say. So, there is still a very clear, but hopefully smaller part of me that says the world does not want to be saved. Um, and I give you evidence <laughs> everywhere <laughs> in, in, the, in the world where there is conflict, where there is hate, where there is fear, where, it, where there is the lack of love. It, but it seems to me there's so much that rides, so much of our lives ride on the, the political choices that, um, that a few people have made um, to, to carry on in selfishness and greed and fear. And there are few who make decisions for the many and take very few steps to lift up others at the same time. Um, so I behoove the leaders of the world to work for the 
safety, the love of all people of the world. And that I say in contrast to the older I get, <laughs> the less interested I am in saving the world and more interested in enjoying what, what small part of it I'm actually interacting with. So part of this talk is gonna be about what are the small ways that I personally make choices um, in, in the world that is, that is my world. So I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about this book. In 1963, Edward Lorenz presented a hypothesis to the New York Academy of Science. A butterfly could flap its wings and set molecules of air in motion, which would move other molecules of air, in turn moving more molecules of air, eventually capable of starting a hurricane on the other side of the planet. And uh, Lorenz was laughed out of the conference. His ideas were preposterous, but fascinating. Eventually, the so-called butterfly effect became a staple of science fiction, a combination of myth and legend. Then after 30 years, scientists worldwide came to the conclusion that the butterfly effect was authentic, accurate, and viable. It became known as the law of sensitive dependence upon initial conditions. It's, 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 it's funny, I mean, but true. I'll read that again because it's, it's not something you just remember if you just heard it once. The law of sensitive dependence upon initial conditions a force encompassing more than butterfly wings. And the butterfly effect is not just true for the weather on our planet, it's true for us, it's true for all of us. And we can look at it this way. We all know stories of people who have changed everything. And, and so in this book, he has uh, several stories of people who have changed everything. Can you see how your life matters? There are people everywhere whose lives will be shifted and shaped by the moves you make and the actions you take today and tomorrow. Every single thing you think and do matters. You have been created as one of a kind. On planet Earth, there has never been one like you, and there never will be again. Your spirit, your thoughts, your feelings, and your ability to reason and act all exist in no one else. You have been created in order that you might make a difference. You have within you the power to change the world. The very beating of your heart has meaning and purpose. Your actions have value far greater than silver or gold. Your life and what you do with it today matters forever. And, and, and that's the end of what I want to talk about in this book. But knowing this, where do we go from here? So I have a few ideas, which actually have been brewing for quite a, quite a while. We can decide to trust our own intuition and not get overwhelmed by the, by the, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the idea that we, we're going to, us individually is are going to change the world. And we're not, but we're going to change our world because we're not in charge of what happens to us. We seem to attract what happens to us on, a, on an unconscious level, but we certainly do have the power to decide what we think about what happens to us. So we trust our own initiative, intuitive connection with spirit to set the right direction for us. 
I mean, this, <laughs> it matters so much to, to trust spirit. And I don't do it every day. I don't do it maybe once or twice a day. And the rest of the time, I forget. I'm not conscious. When we know that everything matters, we live a life of purpose and moral consciousness. A lot of our fears and worries, and especially our complaints, disappear. N notice if you complain less, as you become more confident in who you are in connection with spirit and in connection with each other as, as life unfolds. Joseph Campbell says, we are not on our journey to save the world, but to save ourselves. And I picked up another quote, and I don't know where it came from, but I'll read that as well. Yesterday, I was smart. I wanted to change the world. Today, I am wise. I will change myself. How to change the world. Um, be happy with what shows up. You know, <laughs> I'm in the house, it's 63 degrees, I turn it up, and I know that when I go outside, it's going to be a lot colder, a lot colder. But I also remember a few years ago when it was 25 below, um, that was a cold day. <laughs> that was a cold day, that was unique, <laughs> that was unique. <laughs> So um, one thing that I do is try to pay attention to little things because during, during the pandemic, when we were all wearing masks and, and many of us not going out at all, um, I became um, more conscious. Um, part of the reason was I was going through cancer treatment. So the only places I went were the grocery store and the... Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, the things that were coming together at that time, Larry was very sick also. My husband was very sick. So I was, uh, I was being asked in, in my spiritual journey to just be more conscious of small things that were happening. So I, I became aware that I could, um, I could be conscious going to the grocery store. Um, but it's not, it's not the easiest thing because m most of the time I'm just going in to get something and then leaving. And um, it's, but it, it has become for me a, a really great opportunity to, to be conscious. And, and because I choose to be conscious, I often have adventures that I would not ordinarily have. So I was in Myers a few weeks ago, and I met this um, uh, sick man. Uh, we, you know, often call the that religious group Sikhs, but the, actually it's sick. And um, I could tell, I could tell it, he, he was a sick man because his turban was different from the turban of the Sufis and the <laughs> the Hindus, which so we began this really great conversation. I learned that there were at least one or two Sikh temples around here. His whole family came along. I met the rest of his family. I gave him a hug. I mean, I told him I was minister at Interfaith. And we, we just, <laughs> it was just amazing. It was just brief and, and powerful. It was just very brief and powerful. So th that was, but I usually do find, then I found an, another time I, there was a woman looking at cookie scoops. You know how you scoop out your cookie dough and put it on, you know, squeeze it and let it go on the, on the um, 
cookie sheet, and um, we were having a discussion about cookie scoops. And I, I said, well, there are bigger ones available at Walmart. <laughs> But, you know, this, this is a meaningful, this it seems silly, but it's a meaningful encounter. It's an important, it's important the consciousness that we do everything. Can we do, can we do everything we do? Can we do it consciously? That's our, that's our question for, for the day. Um, just a few weeks ago, I went into Kroger's and I had a six, a beer, a six pack of beer bottles to, to, you know, to put in the machines. And I walked in and on the right hand side, there was a big bag of red Coke cans. And I thought, this is, you know, this is not right because I know these can be recycled because they're Coke, obviously, huh? But I started to put them in the machine and it wasn't working because for some reason I was getting my hand too far in into the machine and the machine didn't want didn't want to accept so obviously the people before me whose coke cans they were you know um were didn't re do it right so it took me a long time to do it right but i helped another woman do hers properly because i wasn't the only one having problems that day so I came out of the store with an extra five bucks in my pocket. <laughs> it's a t and it, it was a big deal because it saved aluminum and, and because it w became a connection with a person that, um, a, s a complete stranger. How are we, how are we treating those complete strangers that we meet up with every day if we go to the grocery store? I mean, and, and most of us do, and that's an opportunity. I think that's a really wonderful opportunity. So watch the level of stress and chaos in your life. Um, and remember the peace of God that lies beneath all of the chaos. And when I, um, when I think of that, I get the image of a, of a, a pond a, a big pond where, or the ocean, in fact, where the surface is not level. The surface is always moving, but the, the water underneath is quiet, is quiet. And that's where, that's where our source lies. That's where our, that's where with that memory, we can be in touch with with um, with the quiet place that's inside of all, everyone, all of us. Wake up every morning, know that you're starting over and remember who you are, remembering that today you're going to create for yourself and for the people around you, you're gonna create a life that, that you love. I know that when I wake up in the morning, sometimes I go, let's see, what do I have to do? What do I have to do today? But if I woke up in the morning and the first thing was, I have to remember who I am, I, <laughs> I have to set my goal for the day to have a good day, to have the right um, people come to meet with me. I have to have, I, you know, I'm going to, not I have to, but I will, I am. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy um, feeling like I'm making a contribution to the world. So I decide that. I have to decide that. I also, I also, I'm also looking at the problems I have around my house and they're not important. I have a mouse trap that is a live trap. And you've heard many stories about my, my mouse trap and, um, and the mice. And I, I, caught, I, I set the trap about 
dinner time, and then it just uh, it seemed like a few minutes later, this was the night of the snowstorm, the first snowstorm, and I'm going, I don't want to go anywhere with this, I don't want to, I don't want to take this mouse out in the car and down to the end of the street where I usually take the mice <laughs> that I catch. I said, I don't want to do this. And, and so um, I, took, I took the trap and I put it um, on a chair near the back door. I was going to get to it when I finished whatever I was doing. Well, by the time I got back to the mouse trap, the trap was open and the mouse was gone. <laughs> Yay, mouse. Um, <laughs> um, so it reminds me that even, even the things that are so necessary, we, we don't get them all done and when we want to get them done. And I believe that eventually I will relieve the house of mice. Um, <laughs> Because um, Randy, um, I found a hole two weeks ago. It was about this big between the boards and the, and the foundation of the house. So I think that was the hole they were all coming in. <laughs> and um, I mean, that hole is big enough for a rat. Um, anyway, no rats, just mice. And... Um, I, I, the hole is not a hole anymore, and I believe I will eventually catch all the mice. I think I have to make sure I catch them in the now before they have babies. <laughs> it, then if it's, it's all over. I mean, <laughs> if that happens, it's all over. But the pot, it's possible for me to get more traps and put them in different places, too. Um, so I got distracted by the, by that story. Um, <laughs> oh. But I want to talk about love. Love, of course, we've heard before. I've said something. Um, it is with our love that we change the world because that's who we are. Um, and I believe that love is like like we heard before love is the one the one thing that will save the world we are love and so whether we know it or not wherever we go and whatever we do whatever choices we make we're we're making them in love as much as we can knowing about love and being the love that we are everywhere everybody all the time is saving the world that way. Communities are saving the world. Families are saving the world. Um, but also, we, we do what we need to do to, to, we can, we do also realize we can do more to relieve suffering. And one of the things, um, we do what we can without judging ourselves. But we have to choose to leave the rest. We have to, there's just a certain amount we have to leave. We're not the only ones responsible. We're responsible for changing our world, but we're not responsible for changing. We, we can't do it all ourselves. We have to do it together. And we know, um, we have to know when to do it and when to let go. And it, it's, um, it's very important. It is important to know when to let go. So um, do, we do what we do to be happy. We, we are doing what we're doing to be happy. And if we are happy, then others around us will be happy. And with that, saying that, it's important to know that we are more important, more powerful than we think. Just with our sharing our attitudes 
as we go about living our lives encourage others encourage others um, what we um, um, I often listen to um, I get quotes every day from Aaron through Barbara Brodsky which is nice um, so part of what he says what you do is not important but who you how you do it is important are you present? Are you aware? Are you aware of the light that you carry everywhere with you? Are you aware of the love that you carry everywhere with you? And uh, lastly, do you remember, do you remember who you are? I know that when I get irritated and when I get fearful and when I get angry and when I get um, sad, I am not remembering who I am because I am, I am a child of God. I carry God with me wherever I go. I carry this consciousness and do what I can. I carry this, um, this love, this light. And that's the most that's the most I can do. Are you, are you remembering who you are? And, and if it's true, I want to hear yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> you are remembering who you are. And so now it's time for responses, questions that I probably won't be able to answer, but I can try. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you.